immemorial. That he is from the time of old. God has desired that his own people will gather together so he can bless them. Let me tell you a secret. There are some things you'll never get in isolation. There are some blessings you'll never receive all alone by yourself. I don't care how studious you are, how spiritual you are, how serious you are. If you stay alone all by yourself, there are some things you'll never taste, you'll never know. But it's when you gather together with the people of God, and you gather together with the people who pray, and the people who love the Lord. You gather together with them a lot of things that you couldn't get by yourself. Those things will begin to happen to you. Let me show you in Genesis chapter 49, verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a Lord giver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. You see that? That is prophecy. Anybody that stays behind, anybody that will not gather together for the people of God, when the overflowing blessings of God are coming from heaven, he doesn't want to be a part of the fulfillment of this great prophecy. I'm going to be a part of that fulfillment. Stephanie chapter 3, verse 19. Behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflict me, and I will save her that halted, and gather her that was driven out. How many people have been driven out of the joy and the happiness and the goodness of the Lord? And the Lord is saying, when you gather together, when you fulfill the prophecy, and when you obey the commandment to gather my saints together, and then myself, I will gather her that was driven out, I will get them praise and fame in every land. And the Lord already said that in every land. When they, were, when they have been put to shame, he said, he'll wipe our shame away. As we gather together, then he says, all the shame we had before everything will vanish away. At that time, I will bring you again. Even in the time that I gather you, it says when you respond to this gathering, the great gathering that is going to happen, it's not just you alone, you are in partnership with the Almighty God, and it says, I will gather you, and then it says, I will make you a name. And he prays among all people of the earth, when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, says the Lord. What kind of preparation does the Lord want me to make as a pastor? What kind of preparation does the Lord want you to make as our overseer in our stage, our overseer in our region, our pastor in our local church? What kind of preparation does God want you to make as a member of the choir? A preparation the Lord wants you to make as a student. Take all hindrances away. And it's he that will be a stumbling block between you and your neighbor. That if you talk to him, he will not accept to take that away. And it's he that will be a hindrance between you and your co workers in the office, between you and the people in the market, between you and a fellow student, between you and anybody, your relative. You take all the hindrances away, you cast out the stones, and then you're able to prepare the people and prepare the way for them to come. It says, Everybody you meet, daughters of Zion, the men and the women, you will tell everyone, the men will come, the women will come, our well-wishers will come, even the people, antagonistic people, they will come. And then as we gather together, there will be an abundance blessing from on high on everybody in Jesus' name. In Zechariah chapter 8, reading from verse 21. And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another saying, Let us go speedily. That's participation. Let us go. I'm going, we're going, we're going together. Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord. That's the prayer. You see, we must join both together. You cannot just neglect one, hopping on one leg, and trying to carry a heavy load with only one hand, or trying to wash yourself with only one hand, or trying to tie your wrapper with only one hand. But 
both hands or try to go somewhere both legs or try to look at something see one eye but with both eyes to see and so that's why those two things were joined together and prayer and it says pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord opposed I will go also yea many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord opposed in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord we will do it and when we pray God will answer if you have never seen answered prayer a miracle is coming your way Jeremiah chapter 29 and we're reading from verse 11 Jeremiah 29 verse 11 for I know the thoughts that I think toward you God is thinking about you it's already writing some things down it says when you get there this is what I'm going to do for you this is what I'm going to do for you you will not miss it I said you will not miss it I says I, I know the thoughts that I think towards you says the Lord thoughts of peace not of evil to give you give you what an expected end that expectation of your heart of your life of your family will be fulfilled in jesus name then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and i will hearken unto you they will answer your prayer and you shall seek me and shall find me when you shall search for me with all your heart this is a glorious time the great time will be waiting for and great will be the blessings the lord will pour upon you upon the people upon all of us together the time has come are you ready why are you sitting now if you are ready why don't you tell the lord something great is coming on the way you will be there i will be there and tell everybody around tell everybody around something great is going to take place great will be your blessing my brother my sister tears will be wiped away sorrows will go sicknesses will go affliction will depart enemies will bow down before you tell the lord something great is coming on the way